Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and you are watching Networking Field Day 13. We are here in San Jose, California with Viptela. We have invited a group of networking bloggers, speakers, podcasters, and luminaries of the community to take part in this discussion, offer their opinions, ask questions, and add their voice to the, the conversation about software-defined wide area networking. If you would like to learn more about Tech Field Day, including how to become a presenter or a delegate, please join us at our website, techfieldday.com. If you would like to see more videos about this and other exciting technologies, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So let me just uh, set the stage the way that we're going to do it. Uh, I'm going to be dancing a little bit. Um, we're going to transition from slides to explain to you a little bit more in depth what the technology is and how it works. Then there's going to be a slide that is going to set up for the demo itself. You're going to see the topology. And then I'm going to sit down and just show you how it works. So we've decided to integrate, not to have two separate pieces when we talk theory and then show you the demo. We want you to connect sort of immediately the theory to practice. That sounds good to you? And I know you guys are not shy to ask questions. So I encourage you to ask questions. We have all the expertise to answer any question that you have, either in person or anything that comes online, all right? So let me first um, kind of walk you through a customer journey. So as Ramesh mentioned, an enterprise-grade customer, diverse set of requirements, large scale, maybe, maybe medium scale. It doesn't really matter. The same type of philosophy applies across small, medium, large, extra large, same type of philosophy. So what I'm going to walk you through in here is that what is that customer journey to enable services, and then we're going to dissect one by one, and that's what we're going to um, show you first the theory and then immediately the demonstration. Right, so the first thing is bringing up a hybrid WAN site. Right? So you saw that we started off with having one site and one data center. We want to add another site, which would be, uh, for example, um, uh, named here site two, which is bringing hybrid site. How do I bring up a site? Today, I may be a, an MPLS customer. I'm trying to get into the hybrid environment. Maybe my final goal is to get to all broadband. I'm not there. It's going to take me maybe years to get there. I'm stuck in a limbo in between of how do I operate my environment today as I'm keeping introducing hybrid sites or broadband only sites. It's a, there is no greenfield. I'll go as far as just saying there is no greenfield environment. Everything is brownfield. So site one, we're going to show how that joins the, the network, how we can take the site through a bring up process and how we are going to transition it from an MPLS only site to an MPLS plus broadband site. You see it's all based on Viptela vEdge technology. There's no other device in here that needs to be in here. There's no legacy routers whatsoever that participate in a hybrid one setup. The second is I said there is no greenfield. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume there is a traditional router. We're going to use CSR 1000V, Cisco CSR 1000V, which is connected to one of my MPLS networks. And now I want to be able to communicate from site one to the legacy site straight through the MPLS network. So I'm going, to, I'm going to explain to you a little bit more in details how powerful that is. We're talking about going straight in the underlay from the VH device. I'm not talking about LAN connections that go back into the, into the MPLS network. Single interface that carries both overlay and underlay traffic. No backend connections. BGP with a service provider directly on the WAN interface. Coming back to an enterprise grade customer. The next thing, we're going to transition to cloud services. I think Ramesh spent enough time. Zscaler. Zscaler, the whole purpose of Zscaler is getting from the branch office to the Zscaler POP as fast as possible so Zscaler POP can send you to the internet so you can access your SaaS service. Not every SaaS service would welcome Zscaler. For example, Office 365 will be against it. Some others will be more tolerant and they will say it's okay for you to hop through a cloud-based service to get to us first. Our, our option here is what we're trying to say, go as fast as possible. No backhauling, 
to either data center or regional facility. We'll talk about there is an option to go through a regional facility, but there's also an option to go straight to Zscaler. We want to optimize the performance of the SaaS application through Zscaler security. The next one, service insertion. Okay, this is big. You see two services. This is not service insertion, this is service chaining. So what we're going to do, we're going to chain through two services, Palo Alto and Snort IDS. Completely transport independent, completely IP address independent, completely geographically dispersed. Services can live anywhere in your network. You insert them based on where they are. My firewall can be in Phoenix, my IDS can be in San Jose. Different locations, irrespective of IP addressing or topologies. Then we're going to talk about bringing partner connectivity. Ramesh mentioned segmentation, extremely important. I want to bring an external entity into my network, yet I need it to be securely brought. Segmentation, service insertion, all of it ties together. Extranet service, that we, what we call extranet, we're going to walk through that. Very interesting twist, grounded in a lot of experience and expertise in routing route redistribution, route leaking. Routing is tough business. To know what you're doing, it's not an off and on button. Then we're going to talk about a cloud. Amazon Web Services, inherent part of the fabric. Same service that I consume from the branch, I can consume in AWS. Theoretically, I can insert a service that is hosted in AWS. I can put my Palo Alto firewall in AWS, and I can insert my Palo Alto firewall in AWS into the traffic path between the sites. Completely transparent. I mentioned topology agnostic, IP address agnostic. It doesn't matter. For us, AWS is just one more site that came up. You get a full range of services. And then SaaS applications. Yes, go to SaaS directly. Office 365 would advocate that. But what if I have two ISPs at the remote site? Which ISP do I go through? If I'm going to throw this into direct internet access, which one of the ISPs I'm going to choose? Which one is better behaving? How do I know? It's not a book-ended solution. Like Ramesh said, I cannot put anything in SaaS cloud. How do I know that this ISP is behaving better than the other ISP? Some interesting heuristics about how we learn about traffic patterns and decide on which application is preferred. Um, for which ISP is preferred for a specific SaaS application. We're going to show you that too. This is the breadth of what we're going to talk about today. It's a little bit loaded. I hope we have time. <laughs> so we'll get to it. Oh, forgot. Application SLAs. Of course, being able to deliver the SLA through the fabric, critical. It's not one trick pony. It's not just about doing one thing and calling a day. It's, we're going to see how, what it means to do enterprise-grade QoS. All right. So we're going to start with bringing up first step, hybrid WAN and brownfield integration. Before I step, any questions? All good. All right. Feel free to interrupt me any time that... Uh, So let me see. Let me see how it shows on the screen. Here we go, maybe full screen. Nah. Good. Let me go. Maybe it's like that. It's the projector. Okay. All right. I assume we can see online what I'm showing, right? I can't ver validate, but yeah. I hope I hope it's visible. Okay. So Ramesh mentioned. Uh, uh, Ramesh mentioned uh, the tiers of our architecture. We have three distinct tiers of our architecture, completely separated for full modularity. Data plane, control plane, management plane. Three completely different elements. Completely isolated, independent of each other. Um, this is the management plane. This is vManage. This is the tool we call vManage. It's a single pane of glass for every operational thing that you need to do in your environment. This is where you define things, that's where you troubleshoot things. Uh, this is your single pane of glass into this. And this is a, this is a virtual, uh, virtual appliance? This is a virtual machine. Appliance. Yes, this is a virtual machine. It can operate as a single appliance. As you can see in here, it says vManage count one. Of course, it's a demonstration topology. This is a really small one. I'm going to show you at the end something that is really sizable, so you can kind of appreciate the size of it. This is one device. 
I can build a cluster of these devices. They all operate in active, 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 active mode. We shard different functionalities across multiple devices. So it's not active standby solution. It's an active, active nodes, mm -hmm. or active, 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 active nodes. It can be used for redundancy. Um, if I just want to install two nodes in the same location, there is also a, an option to install two nodes in different locations. Of course, there are certain characteristic network characteristics that have to be met as far as latency and throughput that have to exist between the two locations to, be, to allow the database synchronization. But it's an all active. There is not a single element of our solution that is active standby. Everything is active active. So this is the vManage can, uh, can be deployed as a cluster. You can see in here the amount of vSmart controllers. You can see here the amount of vEdges. You can actually see one vEdge down. Right? So I can, I, can, I can click on it and I can see that it's a VH, that in fact it's a VH in this, in this room mm -hmm. that was provisioned, yet it shows down that it's unreachable. Right? So it's just an example for you guys that how you can see different, uh, different things in here.